Let me start. Let me start. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. So uh, welcome back. Uh, we're uh, we're wishing uh, Kianto, you know, a safe, <laughs> safe, uh, safe trip to uh, to California. Okay, yes. and if he, if he join us, you know, uh, we'll be happy to hear, you know, what's uh, where where he is. So in this uh, session, we're going to discuss. This is chapter eighteen of the uh, uh, ham, uh, the the book Hands On Machine Learning with R. And this one is titled Generalized Low Rank Models. And this was interesting because. Uh, for me, this was the first time that I approached this uh, this concept, but I didn't realize that this concept I already knew something about it. Okay, the only thing that I didn't, you know, uh, recognize the label. And you can think about the generalized rank low rank models as analog to the generalized linear models, right? The GLMs. And the GLMs, usually you, you could have experience, for example, when you build a logistic a regression, right? You know, that you, you are trying to, uh, uh, you know, to create a model to predict uh, the outcome of, uh, for example, a categorical uh, variable. So generalized models, generalized linear models includes many combinations of uh, linear and nonlinear models. The same uh, concept happens here in the generalized low rank models. And you will see that depending on the, the, the combination of certain parameters, you can create, for example, a, P, a model uh, similar to PCA or a model similar to what is called non-negative ma matrix factorization, okay, which is used normally with uh, imaging uh, processing and also text uh, processing, okay? It, it also reduces the amount of information that we need to approximate the original, the original data. So these are all methods uh, that uh, reduce the dimensionality of your data, okay? So let's continue. And these are the linear objectives, which are the, the chapters, the main chapters of the of, of this section. We're going to talk about introduction, then some prerequisites in terms of the R packages that we need. Uh, the main idea, which is a brief explanation of how generalized low rank models uh, work mathematically. Then finding the lower ranks, which is the components, okay? The, the ranks here are similar to the analog to the components of the of, of a PCA. Then we're going to fit a GLRM, general, uh, general, generalized low rank models. Oh, well, that's a lot of words. Um, using uh, uh, the, the package H2O because they have been the pioneer in R to uh, implementing this type of models. But as you see, you you have you know been acquainted with this concept already. The only thing that you have been acquainted with certain type of models within the generalized uh, low rank model uh, universe. And then some final things. Okay, so in the introduction, which is uh, the first paragraph of the, of the text, I just you know try to summarize it in certain ideas is that we already discussed uh, PCA, right? And let me take the opportunity to give you in the chat, to give you some uh, very good uh, articles that I found relating to PCA, for example. Uh, PCA is a transformation of the original data using matrix, matrix algebra. So this article would explain exactly how that process works. And also the concept of the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, which is central to PCA, okay? So here we go, that's the article. And then also I was researching a little bit more and there are several packages. You can check this, uh, this link 
there are several packages in R that deal with uh, PCA, apart from the base uh, functions, you know, the PR comp, there's another function, print comp, et cetera. So this one is a very good article uh, for in this site, statistical uh, tools for high throughput data, data analysis. And he explains very well, you know, graphically and with a lot of examples, uh, how to, you know, how to create the PCAs and how to interpret them. Okay. So, so PCA is a model, right? An algorithm that its main objective is to reduce the dimensionality. In other words, the number of features that you have in your original data in a way that you don't lose uh, critical information found in that original data. And the critical information that we are going to be dealing is the variance, all right? So we want to capture, like we 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 uh, we saw uh, in the previous session, we want to capture as much variance as possible of the original data with the least uh, PCs, the, the least precap components that we can we can create. As we saw in that data set, my basket, right, the basket of of, of goods, you know, on a on a on you know that, that that you can shop in in a grocery uh, store, uh, you saw that there was a little bit of um, weakness in the PCA modeling because the nature of those uh, features were not truly linear, and we could see it in the correlation. So that's one of the things that the generalized low rank models tries to uh, uh, tries to improve. Okay, you know, incorporating certain uh, techniques to try to capture those nonlinear uh, relationships, depending on, on the model that you're, you're going to be using. So if those original uh, variables are not, the relationship is not entirely linear, then PCA is going to be struggling uh, capturing uh, the variance. And you saw in that uh, uh, example um, in chapter 17 that uh, we needed a lot of principal components, you know, from the features. The features were a total of 42. We needed around 27 or 28 principal components to capture at least 80% of the variance. And that's something that, you know, in, in the real world, you're going to see, and you need other tools to try to compensate with it. So like the author says, a generalization of PCA and matrix, matrix factorization called generalized low RAM models has become the popular choice, okay, to dimension reduction. So within GLRMs, PCA is just one of several models that we can create, and we'll see how we can how we can create it. All right. Okay. So following the book, uh in R, we're going to be using the, the, the tidyverse uh, packages, the, the dplyr for data manipulation, ggplot2 for data visualization, the uh, tidyr for data reshaping, you know, the pivots. And then uh, the author centers on H2 to fit GL, GLRMs. Um, there are not that many. Uh, packages. I, I try to, you know, check the universe. And there are many packages that deal with GLRMs. There are packages that deal with different models that can create using this framework. For example, PCA, you know, you have a, a, a lot of packages in R. And also what is called non-negative matrix factorization and then MF. Also, you have certain packages, not that many, but certain. Uh, if we go to our our uh, competition, you know Python, for example, uh, Python has more more uh, you know more variety in this in this area, and also H two O works very well in in Python. Okay, so those are the prerequisites, and also we're going to continue uh, using my basket, but we're going to do an example with the empty cars data set. All right, so here is the main idea. What GLRMs 
uh, you know, do is reduce the dimension of a data set by producing a condensed vector, right? A condensed vector for every row and column in the original data. So let's say that we have this matrix, right? It's a data frame really, but let's visualize as a metric, matrix with M, which is the number of observations, the number of rows, and N, which is the number of features. That's going to be rearranged, right? Okay, or even decompose into two matrix. One that is going to be called X, which has the original M, the original observations, but now it has a rank, okay? And that rank is represented by K, which is the number of components or in the language of the DRMs, the number of archetypes, right? Then we're going to have a Y, which is really the one that we're interested, which is the number of uh, 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 features, but then they're going to be compressed, okay? Instead of the original observations, they're going to be compressed with the number of ranks. So you have in X, you have the number, the, the rank number, you have it at the top, okay? Which are the features, and in Y, the number corresponding to the observations. And this is where you get your, you know, uh, your, your group, okay, or your clusters. This matrix here, the X and the Y, is going to be approximating this matrix. It's not going to be the same, okay? Because there's some techniques that the algorithm use to introduce some noise into the data. But depending on the number of K, and number of K is a parameter that we have to uh, tune, okay? Depending the choice of the number of K, then you're going to have a better approximation of this matrix, okay? Any comments so far? This is mainly the, the main idea of generalized uh, uh, low rank models. Yeah, it's really the G1, the J1, it's really similar uh -huh. to the loading vector to the PCA. Exactly, yes, yes. And, and, and you will see how you can convert depending on certain, you know, uh, combinations, levers of parameters, you can, you know, convert this to PCA. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's do an example, a toy example with the empty cars uh, data set, which is the data set, you know, that mostly, mostly of, of us knows about, you know, certain number of car models and then their uh, miles per gallon and uh, the specifications of the of the engine and the, and, and the vehicle. So, if we introduce this method to this data set, okay, this data set has uh, 12 columns. And because we, we use the head function, we only see six rows, but it has 32 rows. So it has 32, a matrix of M equal to 32 and N equal 12, okay? Uh, 11, sorry. Yeah, 12 is the is the name of the, of the model. Okay, so if we want to represent this, in that format of X and Y, right? With a rank of three. So we're going to be dealing with three main archetypes or three main uh, components, right? So what we do is that we decompose this matrix into X, which is going to have the same number of observations, but now it's going to have only three archetypes to represent you know, this matrix. And then the Y, which is going to be, you know, the, the grouping, right? Or, or the, you know, I, I visualize it like a clustering. You know, the word that the, the we're doing is the original features, but then grouped by the archetypes. Okay, it's like a transposition of this of this matrix. And this is the one that we really, you know, want, want, to, want, want, want to see because this one, you know, can be used for many, uh, many visualizations. Okay, and basically that, that's it. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a really uh, simple model. There's some algebra involved, but this is mainly the gist of this uh, 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 framework. You know, okay. Maybe the tricky part for this is mm -hmm. that the book doesn't explain how they they made the decomposition, really. Because you uh, see a matrix multiplication is also right. a, a linear combination. 
Yeah, uh, uh, the author tries to explain it in the in the in the book. Okay, and there's a video also that you know uh, gives you some some hints. This video, okay, I was going to put it here in the chat. Great. Uh, this video also uh, gives you some uh, idea on how how to do it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't think in an hour. Yeah, I don't think in an hour we have the time. I wish we had the time, you know, <laughs> to go from this A matrix in detail to the X and to the Y. But you know that, you know, you you you, you know how how you know in 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 instinct you know how to get there. Okay. Yeah. You know, just so matrix manipulation, transform, transposing, etc. Uh, doing the identity matrix, blah blah blah, to you know get there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Think, think, like, think like PCA, PCA, but with a certain, you know, uh, certain parameters that gives you more combinations. Okay. Right. So the resulting archetypes, this arc one, arc two, arc three, here in this, you know, uh, type of uh, model is similar in spirit to the PCAs, to the PCA, to the PCs in PCAs, as they reduce a feature set that represents our original features, our now, however. Some questions, you know, pop to mind, right? How does German produce the archetype values? That's what your question, I mean, right? Angel. And then how do you select the proper value of K? Which is because you could have three or you could have four, you could have five. Which one are you going to choose? Okay. So we'll address these questions next. So let's continue. Okay. So finding the lower ranks it's a matter of choosing, as you know, we have seen before, of choosing what is called a loss function. Okay, so the loss function is going to be a function that, uh, once you have that that matrix, how well that matrix, when it's you know recomposed again to the original matrix, how well that matrix represents the original values? Because remember. We're decomposing, but we're losing some information. You know, this is not perfect. This is not a perfect uh, operation, okay? It's not a matter of just decomposing the matrix. There's some, you know, uh, processes that are being added to this. So how well is going to be our representation of X and Y when we reverse the process to get the original matrix? And for example, you can use a quadratic uh, loss function, which is similar in part to the some of the square errors, you know, our famous o OLS, uh, you know, uh, least square, least square methods, which is trying to minimize the difference between the original data and the matrix, the decomposed matrix of X and Y. All right. So that's, that should be, you know, this is more, one of the simplest, you know, loss functions that we have. Other loss functions that we can use that the author mentions, but doesn't give you, you know, how, you know, what, what is the underlying function? Uh, we have to do some research there. It's called the Hoover, uh, the, the Huber, the Huber law, loss function, which it says here that the Huber loss graphically, you know, in this case, uh, is the is the green uh, uh, line, which is this line here, which is a little bit less parabolic, right? Okay, it's more like a like a tangent. Okay, and in zero, that's the inflection point. Uh, compared to the quadratic loss, because the quadratic, because it's square, is going to give you a parabola, right? Of a loss function, and you have to find the the, the global uh, minimum. So here, uh, it gives you a very more, you know, uh, uh, less, you know, let, let's see, less uh, slope. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way, less slope here with the, with the quadratic, okay? Which Less is, sensible, is, maybe. Yeah. It's, it's flat, you know, I, I would describe that, that like it's flatter, you know, this Hoover loss than that quadratic, okay? And of course, prob probably, I haven't seen the, the Hoover, but probably it will require less, you know, iterations uh, to get the, the global uh, minimum, okay? Then this is one of the things that is going to depart from PCA. Because you know that PCA basically uh, is the decomposition of of those uh, of that original matrix 
into you know principal components, right? Very clear. Now, in generalized uh, low ranking models, we're going to do something called regularization. Okay, and that's a very important component because that component is the one that is going to give you the ability to then create different models. Okay, so for example, let me show you. Uh, this is, uh, I, I took this. Let me get this. Yeah, I took this from this video. Okay, I think you have it in the already in the chat. But I took this screen. Let me see if I can find the, yeah, this screen. Okay, so this is the model incorporating not, not just the X and Y, right? The X and Y uh, uh, a matrix, but also the regularization components for X and for Y, okay? And what it does is that if you do the, the, the quadratic loss for X and Y, and you don't use any regularization, this is a method that is called traditional PCA in generalized the RAG models. So the regularization is going to give you the ability to create models that differ from PCA. So for example, if we keep uh, you know, uh, using the loss function of the quadratic loss, but then we introduce a regularization for non-negative constraint, in other words, for positive values, then we get the famous non-negative matrix factorization, an NNMF, all right? Then if we do keep doing the quadratic, the loss quadratic, but then we don't use the X regularization, but then we use a Y regularization that is called one unit sparse constraint. We get K means. And if we use the Huber loss function for both matrices, and then we use a regularization with the quadratic uh, loss, then we get robust, robust PCA. So you can see that the, the combination of these components gives you a lot of models. And that is the core of GLRMs, generalized uh, low rank models, incorporating this uh, regularization components and then uh, uh, you know, alternating with different loss functions, okay? All right. So for the regularization, uh, there are several methods. Uh, you can use the lasso, which is going to uh, push those uh, coefficients that are going to, is going to push it to zero. So you are going to have also a feature selection a component there. You can use non-negative uh, uh, regularization for you know, only positive values. And the purpose of code is to minimum, minimize overfitting. Then, now that we know uh, a little bit about the loss function, you know how how, how are we go, how are we going to get a, a model that approximates uh, better that original matrix? Then there are two approaches to selecting K, and it depends on your overall goal. Because you can use these GLRMs, you can use it for exploratory. In other words, I want to see, I want to I, I want to visualize. Uh, what is what, what is the the you know the the um the clustering okay you know how many groups how many groups are here and which of the uh, features help me uh, cluster different observations all right so for example in the car uh in the empty cars uh uh data set we could use this to cluster, okay, if we have three, K3, rank three, which is going to give you three groups, uh, which are those groups? Are they overlapping? Are they really separate, you know, visualized, okay? Or maybe if we use two groups, rank equal two, then we'll have a better, you know, uh, separation. So you can use this in that way, you know, for exploratory to try to get some patterns out of the data. And it's going to give you, uh, you know, a, 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 a K that conforms to that, you know, particular uh, analysis. On the other hand, if you are using the GRNs to produce a model that will be used to assign future observations, okay, to reduce dimensions, 
then you have you should use some form of CV cross validation, and then you have to tune that K. So in the first one, in the exploratory, you choose the K. Okay, let's say that in the empty cars, you want to see, you know, uh, if, if I uh, if I use the third uh, K three, uh, what what is the visualization of those three groups? And two and four and five and so forth. But you assign the K for the prediction uh, part. Then you'll have to use other methods, and then you have to tune that K. And we're going to see an example of that in the book. Okay, questions, comments so far. Everything no, good? No, it's really interesting. The, you know, yeah. um, the, this book also have a really nice way to interpret that its component. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, I mean, it was revealing because I knew about, of course, I knew about PCA, I know about non-matrix, uh, non-negative non matrix uh, factorization, but it only applies to positive values. Okay, so you have to be careful with that one. But okay. it's, that one, that one is used uh, typically for image image processing and, and also uh, text. Uh, you know, topic modeling, for example. Yeah. Uh, that that's that's good. That's a that's a good uh, uh, model uh, for that. Not really for for tabular numeric. Also. I want to show you something that generalized uh, uh, low-rank models incorporate. And is that, you know, that PCA usually, or, or usually no, you know, it is a fact, um, only deals with numeric values, right? Right. Numeric mm -hmm. values. So the, the generalized low-rank models, like the generalized linear models, opens the the you know the the universe of different types of the de, de, uh, different uh, data types to incorporate other data types okay so for example if you are doing the real continuous uh, you know uh, numeric value ah, i can not hear you i think Yeah, the camera. I think you're wrong with your microphone. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay, great. The internet went down. Um, uh, got it. On my desktop, so sorry for that uh, mishap. <laughs> let me let me get the presentation. Wait a minute. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, but imagine, yeah, this is really powerful to have a, a PCA yeah. with all these variations and also that you can tune to perform right. just PCA if that's the case. Exactly. Yeah, you can perform PCA and, and you saw, you know, how, you know, by the quadratic loss and no regularization, but then you can add different, you know, different parameters to create yeah. more, more, uh, more models. Uh, yeah, and even a, a combination. No, I want to perform a little bit of PCA for this part. Like, you know. Exactly. Yeah, you, you can you can experiment. You know, it's a, it's a good, uh, you know, framework to experiment. Okay, let me see. 
and even though it, it perform it have more power doesn't make more difficult interpretation the interpretation is the same right right yeah it's, it's they the same yeah okay can you see my screen yes i can see it okay so let's see where we are okay um, you were showing the 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 type of values that it can it can use that i know just numeric right i was i was uh showing this this right yeah yeah so it, it can accommodate you know depending on the on the on the loss function okay because that's the one that is going to be comparing the the x and y matrix with the with the original matrix so you can depending on the data type that you have you can choose a different uh you know loss functions and it will you know it will uh it will give you it will give you uh, uh some results okay all right so let's continue where are we okay well, i think we're here that we're doing the the fitting the the yeah. the, the, the 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 hyperparameter uh tuning with k okay so mm -hmm. he, the, he uh, here we're going to use the h2o we're going to follow the example of the of the book okay so this is all you know initiating the your session in in h2o Okay, mm -hmm. connecting to the H2O instance because you have to connect to the uh you know to the server there. And uh we're going to do the basic general model, which is basically PCA, right? The basic general model with the my basket, the same one that we were doing uh in chapter 17. Okay, and this is the instruction. H2O, they already have incorporated a function for GLRM. Uh, we're going to do the training, right, with the my basket. We're going to do a K uh, initially, right? K, uh, no. Uh, we're going we're going to do to do the hyperparameter yet. We're going to just construct a basic GLM. In other words, we're going to assign that K. Later, we're going to do the 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 hyperparameter tuning. Then we're going to get 20, 20 archetypes, you know, or components. The loss function is going to be quad, quad, quadratic. The regularization for X, we're putting none, right? Regularization for Y, none. As a, you can see, we're constructing a PCA here, right? Then the transformation is going to be uh, standardized. We're going to standardize first our you know, original data because we need it in the same scale. We're going to have a maximum of 2,000 iterations, but the model, you know, if, if it converges, uh, before the 2000 is going to converge. So we'll see, you know, how that works. And the random seed to get some reproducibility. Okay, so when we run this, we do a summary, right? And it's going to give you some details about the model, the number of iterations that are ran, which is 1000. So it converged in 1000, a half of what, you know, we, we put at the, as the maximum uh, iterations. Then, uh, it's going to give you a final step size and the final objective value. This is your result of the loss function. Okay, so this is a measure of how far are the are the x and y matrices versus the original matrices, which is thirty one thousand four. Depending on the scale, you are going to say, okay, if this good or bad. Well, <laughs> we, we we have to experiment with that. Okay, so that's the sum of square errors, right? Uh, the number of numeric entries, 84,000. And this is some of the scoring uh, history, you know, to get into the, uh, to arrive, you know, to that uh, convergence. All right. So when we plot this with this function plot, basic JRM, what we can see is that basically after 2,000, sorry, 200, 200, 300, 400, it stays flat, right? So probably we don't need even you know, 1,000. You know, probably between two and uh, 200, 400, we already got a good, you know, estimate, at least of this basic model. So let's look at the var variable importance, which is the components, right? So here with this function, basic GRM model, 
and get into the model and get into the importance. Then we have the standard deviation for each of the components, the proportion of variance and the cumulative proportion. And this is the one that we want to check because when you keep adding those PCs, right? PC1, PC2, PC3, then you see the cumulative uh, variance that is captured. And as we saw in that uh, try with the PCA in chapter 17, we saw that to get at least 80% in that particular uh, 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 parameter, we needed around 27 uh, PCs. Uh, probably this will be the same, the same case, right? Okay, we only have 20, but 20 just capture, let's see how many capture, it just captures 63% of your variance, okay? Which, depending on your, you know, on your goals, maybe that would, that would be enough. But, you know, to get at least 80%, you need more, more components, okay? So this is the same uh, as the PCA, no, uh, uh, no, no difference, right? Okay, let me see something here. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay. So uh, let's plot the variance explained, which is similar to what we did in the PCA. This is the, you know, uh, a data frame of those uh, parameters. And as we can see, this is the cumulative variance, right? You know, for the 20, sorry. I'm doing it in a laptop and it's not that <laughs> I to get some some experience here. Okay, so this is the cumulative variance. As you can see in the PC20 that we that we saw there in the table, we got around 63.63, uh, 63% of 0.63 cumulative variance. And then doing the, the PVE, okay, we see that there is a, you know, there is a decline right right here in PCA, the same way that we uh, saw in in the PCA model. Okay, so it's, this is basically the same model, all right? So the variance is explained by the 20 archetypes. We call it archetypes here in the in the model. Ah, yeah. Keep doing that. <laughs> okay. And then if we transpose that, you know, uh, matrix with the model archetypes and we just uh, choose the first five, this is what we have. We have our observations, right? Okay, the the items that we are studying and then, you know, the archetypes with the different, I don't know if they call it loadings, okay? But, you know, the different dimensions. Uh, this could be analog to the, to the loadings that we do in PDA, in PCA, okay? So we can use this information as he says here to see how the different features uh, contribute to archetype one or compare how features map to multiple archetypes. So the archetype one is analog to the PC one and the PC one is the one is the component that uh, captures the most variance from all of those uh, you know uh, 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 features. Okay, and these are the loadings. Okay, or the or the let's let's call it the, the 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 values that contribute to that archetype. As you can see, a seven up is negative, right? So it's going to push that that value. Okay, that you know imaginary value, uh, you know uh, less than zero. Then lasagna is going to be positive, and so forth. Okay, so which are the ones that are contributed positively? to this archetype and the other ones that are contributing negative. Okay, so another graph here, right? With the same uh, uh, transform uh, matrix. Uh, here, what we have is a combination with the archetype one, right? The combination and we see the, let me see, what do we have here? Uh, let me see if I can get a little bit here, okay. Okay, so we have, okay, so because we're seeing only the first five, we don't know which are the ones that have the most impact, right? The most impact in that archetype one, the PC one. So here, the one that has the most impact is instant coffee. 
with a value of around four. Then we have tea, we have oil or Orlex, we have milk, we have soup, etc. So this is a variable importance uh, plot in uh, descending order. The top one is the one that has the most impact, the second one, third one, and so forth. And then the white one is the one that has the least impact in that archetype. All those, all those uh, guys here, okay? And we can do kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a clustering uh, uh, plot here with the archetype one or archetype two, which are the first and second components that capture at least, you know, the most variance within those total uh, archetypes or components, okay? Right now, we're capturing only here, just to make sure that, you know, we understand, we're capturing over here around 11% of the variance, okay? So it's a very small uh, thing. But at least you can see certain patterns in the data that could be, you know, could be meaningful, okay? Especially here in that area that kind of, you know, clumps, you know, a lot of things. In fact, you know, we cannot even, uh, you know, see clearly because they are, you know, just uh, uh, overimposed uh, here. Okay. I was going to say, okay, so the instant coffee, look at the instant coffee, which is the most relevant uh, feature for the archetype one. Look where it is. Okay. In the four, but with the archetype two is zero. For the archetype two, the one that really wins, you know, uh, the variable importance uh, race is here, KitKat. <laughs> okay, so can you can you say, okay, what is the uh, you know relationship between instant coffee and KitKat? Because they are so apart, you know, one to the other, uh, probably not. You know, they're they're, they're not that you know uh, related. But you can see that here, there's some relationship, right? Soup, Cronenberg, also instant coffee and tea, right? Okay. Uh, broccoli, lettuce, leeks, which are uh, produce. Okay. Uh, let's say cigarettes, wh white wine. Apparently they are, you know, they, they, they go hand in hand. <laughs> okay. So you can, you know, you, you can mine this, uh, you know, to the specific uh, goal that you are looking for okay but this is pca uh, just done in a different way with the gl uh, glrms okay so let's do a screen plot with k but instead of 10 20 we're going to do it with eight so we're going to run that model again with uh, rank number eight, we're going to have eight uh, uh, components. And we're going to do the same. We're going to do the loss quadratic, no regularization, the standardized, et cetera. And then we're going to see this, okay? Uh, as you can see in the reconstruction with K8, in other words, we are putting back from, from X and Y and putting back A. But it's not going to be similar uh, to A, right? Okay, there's going to be some loss of information. So now we have that matrix reconstructed, okay, with this uh, loadings. And we can see when we round it up, we can see that this is similar to the original matrix. If we, uh, you know, get a, get a glimpse of that matrix, the original matrix, you see that uh, those factors fluctuate between zero, one, two, three, etc. I think the 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 maximum number here is seven. Okay, but they kind of behave uh, nominally. Okay, with uh, just, just in, in, integers there. So this is the reconstruction of it, and it's an approximation of that original matrix. In other words, you can with eight, depending on the percent of capture of the variance you can work with those archetypes as the same way as you are working with the 42 of your original features. And they should be, they should give you similar results when you use them for, depending on for exploration or for uh, prediction. Okay, so now we go to the tuning. Uh, tuning is, uh, you know, in, in general, it's a more sophisticated uh, affair 
uh, is he says here, oh, I think it's in the book that H2O doesn't have a function uh, to tune uh, the GRMs. Apparently, it doesn't have the grid. Huh? It doesn't have the grid function. Yeah, it, it doesn't have that, that that grid function. Okay, so you have to, you know, you have to do it, you know, manual right yeah. here. And then we're going to compare the non regularized, right? The, the PCA model, the non regularized GRM with a regularized. And see, you know, what is the difference? And there's going to be something interesting in there. So for the non-negative, right? Uh, we're going to keep keep uh, uh, doing the, the eight here, the model, uh, the rank eight. But then we're going to reduce some regularization, non-negative regularization, because our original uh, our original uh, numbers uh, in the features are positive, okay? From zero to, like I said, to... The maximum, I think, is seven. Well, one of them has seven somewhere. And with Y, the same thing, non negative. Then with the gamma, which is another component uh, for the realization, we're going to do 0 0.5, you know, right in the middle. And the same with Y, standard rise, of course. And the maximum iterations will be 2000. So here we have this result. Okay. Of the you know, the first five. And as you can see, there's some difference, right? Okay. In the reconstruction of the original, this is what we have. Okay. Here, uh, there's some fractions that are introduced in that, in, that, uh, in that reconstruction. Okay. And if we compare the regularized with the non-regularized model, this is more or less, you know, what you're going to be uh, doing. So here is the iteration. Let me see iteration. Okay. That's so with, with a regularization. I, I, exactly. I believe this is the original model, you know, with the 1000. And here is the objective function uh, with the regularization. And as you can see, it takes less, much less uh, time uh, to do it. But there's a caveat. You're not going to have that thirty-one thousand, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some some squares. Okay, the loss function is going to is going to increase a little bit, and and why is that? Let me see, let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it here. Da, 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 da. Okay, final. Okay, this is the final. Okay, now, I, I know what is going on. So. Here, the GRM models, it says in the book, it says that uh, they behave more like a supervised models when there are several hyperparameters that needs to be tuned. So, okay, unfortunately, and this is what I was telling you, doesn't currently provide an automated tune grid option such as H2, H2O grid. So, you know, we have to do it, uh, like I said, we have to do it manually. So I'm going to split the, the, the data frame, right? The training and the, and the validation. Uh, we're going to get some parameters, right? For our uh, search grid, it's going to be, you know, like a, a grid search, okay? Uh, we're going to uh, specify that the regularization it can be none, none and negative or L1 lasso uh, uh, regularization for Y the same, then for gamma, is going to be from zero to one with increments of 0.25. So it's going to be zero, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one. The same thing for gamma, and error equals zero. And then this for loop is the one that is going to, you know, do the, uh, the tuning, okay? As you can see, this model, uh, for me, it took a, a, a while. It took about... Uh, Took about uh, forty minutes uh, to do this in a Mac uh, M1. <laughs> if it's uh, if it's a, a, a you know a, a different processor, it could take it could take more. And this is was uh, parallelized too, so it takes a while because the fours use you, you know that they are slow uh, usually. Okay, so after this, this is okay. So after this, this is the result for the different models that the, the that grid tried and the, the error, right? Okay, the error that we are, we're getting here. 
So the model that I really won the day was non-regularization for X, non-regularization for Y, uh, gamma zero and gamma Y zero, okay? So that's, that is PCA basically, <laughs> okay? So once we identify the optimal model, we want to rerun, right? With those uh, parameters. So here, this is PCA basically, okay? Quadratic loss, no regularization, no gamma. This is PCA. <laughs> so the PCA in this case is the optimal model <laughs> for for our uh, for 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 our deconstructed matrix. Okay, and that's basically the end of the the end of the chapter, the end of the story. Okay, so we we went back to PCA. <laughs> we tried to you know improve it, but PCA wins the day here. <laughs> All right. So any questions so far? <laughs> Let me put here and...